Let's move on to protease inhibitors. Now, protease inhibitors are involving the late stage of protein synthesis and processing. So it's, it's after the nucleic synthesis has already occurred, there are other proteins that are being manufactured that uh, are necessary for the next step, which is packaging and, uh, and uh, assembly of the virus coat. Now, protease inhibitors are part of the component used in heart therapy. There are significant disorders in carbohydrate metabolism that are induced by the protease inhibitors. Now, we're not sure exactly how these agents work, but we think that there may be an inhibition of lipid-regulating proteins that are sites similar to HIV protease. And um, one of the things that we have to be aware of is that 50% of our patients can actually get a protease inhibitor syndrome or PI syndrome. Uh, in, on patients who are taking these uh, pies for over one year. Now, what you see is increased truncal obesity, kind of that buffalo hump, the quasimodo hump that we often talk about, and we can see gynecomastia. We also see facial and peripheral lipodystrophy. So there's often some increased fat development in the face and they have a rounder face, very similar to the kind of changes we see with excess prednisone dosing. We also see hyperglycemia and insulin resistance, and we can see a rise in the serum LDL and triglyceride values. Now, uh, some of the agents are once daily dosing. They require an acidic environment. They can penetrate uh, blood-brain barriers. So we sometimes see them in the central nervous system and in the seminal fluid, which is quite relevant in terms of sexual activity for our patients. It is also excreted in the bile. So we tend to see the protease inhibitors distributed to most tissues and most fluids. In terms of toxicity and adverse events, uh, we do see GI distress. Now, we will see an elevated bilirubin, but we actually don't see an elevation in cholesterol and triglycerides. So when you're taking a look at these medications and answering questions, we often see the protease inhibitors thrown into a question about elevated triglyceride as one of the agents that doesn't cause an elevation of cholesterol or triglyceride. So although it's not really relevant from a clinical point of view, you know, we don't care if something doesn't happen, from an exam point of view, they love to put this drug on it as an example of a drug that doesn't cause elevation of triglyceride. So there's a, there's a, there's a clue there for uh, exam questions. Neurological, you can get peripheral neuropathy. Not listed here is also the fact that you can get headaches and fatigue from this medication. Skin rash can also occur, although it's much less likely than some of the other agents. Now, the other protease inhibitors are probably uh, more popular in terms of um, sort of the common lexicon. So DRV, DRVC, and DRVR, uh, they're either ritonavir-based or not ritonavir-based. They're used in combination with other drugs to boost the effectiveness of the heart therapy. Now remember that these are sulfa-based moieties, so you want to use it with caution in patients who have a sulfa allergy. Once again, toxicity and adverse events GI and GU is mostly hepatic toxicity and skin rash. The next of the protease inhibitors that I just want to mention is amprenovir. Now, fosamprenovir is the prodrug to amprenovir, so I put them together in one slide. These are used in combination with other drugs, like ritonavir, to boost the effectiveness of your therapy. Use it in caution, once again, with patients who, are, who have a sulfa allergy. The toxicity and adverse events are very similar to the other drugs. GIGU is GI distress. You can get a skin rash. Sometimes you can get paresthesias. And um, remember that this, these, uh, the suspension agent is propylene glycol. So we tend not to use this agent in pregnancy and in kids. We're not entirely sure that the drug itself is harmful to pregnant women, but we know that the suspension agent propylene glycol is. Ritonavir is probably one of the best known of the protease inhibitors, and if my memory serves me correctly, I think it was the first one. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Take it with meals uh, cleared by the liver. It's often used to boost other medications' effectiveness due to its ability to increase, pardon me, inhibit the metabolism of those other drugs. 
Now, um, at subtherapeutic doses, we can still inhibit the metabolism of, the, of other protease inhibitors, like indanivir and uh, et cetera. So it is a very useful medication to uh, essentially uh, give us the ability to use less drug to have the same effect. In terms of toxicity and adverse events, GI, GU, once again, you get GI irritation. You can get a bitter, brackish kind of taste in the mouth, and patients will often complain about that. Uh, in terms of blood work, sometimes we get elevation of transaminase values. We also sometimes get an LDL elevation and triglyceride elevation too. As with most HIV drugs, you can get a skin rash from these medications, and you can sometimes get paresthesias without or with a skin rash. Sequenavir is combined with ritonavir, and it is also used both as a substrate and an inhibitor of the cytochrome system, so that once again, it's improving the efficacy of other agents. Toxicity with this is uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and dyspepsia, very similar to the other agents. Once again, you can get skin rash and paresthesias with this uh, particular PI. Uh, finally, we have this new drug, um, uh, tipranavir, which is uh, combined with ritonavir sometimes. We use it as a substrate and as an inducer of cytochrome P450 systems, and we also can uh, induce P glycoprotein. Now, there's an increased risk of rhabdomyolysis with HMG CoA reductase inhibitors or statins, so be very aware that if we're going to be starting patients on this new agent, I think that it's worthwhile just stopping statins if the patients are on statins already. Toxicity and adverse events, GIGU is nausea, vomiting, and hepatic toxicity. And of course, as with most uh, protease inhibitors, skin rash and paresthesias are adverse events.